This video is sponsored by Cadeco.com. Hey everyone, Vegetarian Zombie here with a new episode of Beginning C Sharp with Unity. We're covering our last big topic of control flow in this episode. But before we get loopy, do me a solid and give this episode a like. And if you find this content helpful, please subscribe to the channel. You can also find me at jesner.com and on Mastodon. Feel free to stop by and say hello. As mentioned, we're covering loops. Loops allow us to repeat tasks. Take this very basic loop. Here we have a very simple program written in the basic programming language using a good old fashioned Commodore 64. The first line prints out hello world on the screen and the second line loops back to the first. It's an endless loop that prints out hello world until the user smashes their computer with a sledgehammer. We use loops all the time in development as a way to perform repetitive processing. In fact, C Sharp gives us a large number of loops that I'll demonstrate in this episode. Loops all have a similar construct. They provide a condition for the loop. Once you have a condition, then you have some code you want to repeat while the condition is true. Mind you, the condition may come before or after the code. The first loop is the for loop that you'll find in a lot of programming languages. It starts with the for keyword. After that, you provide a pair of parentheses. Inside this parentheses occurs three things, the initialization, the condition, and the increment. First, we have the initialization. This is where we define a counter variable. In this case, we define an integer. Typically, you set it to zero, but it can be set to anything. Notice that I use a single letter variable known as I. This is one of the few places where you can use single letter variables. It's a common practice. The I just means iterator. Next goes the condition. This is a conditional expression that must resolve to either true or false. In this case, we want the loop to run 10 times, so we'll check if it's less than 10. Finally, we increment the value. I'm using plus plus to increment the value, but you can also use minus minus as well, although you'll end up in an infinite loop. Once you have your loop set up, you can put your code in the braces. Let's get a little busy with loops, but first, a message from my sponsor. Kadeco is a website that aims to teach coding by actually coding. From videos, articles, and even live boot camps, Kadeco will jumpstart your development career. Throughout the years, a lot of you have reached out to me about my teaching style. I try to be open and accessible to all skill levels, and I think I've been successful. That's the result of having worked with Kadeco for the last 10 years. I'm actually the first employee. I started my journey with Kadeco back when it was known as RayWinderlich.com, building up the website and as an article editor. Then I grew the Unity team over there and spent the following years creating video tutorials on a whole variety of subjects. Now I manage both the Flutter and Android teams. These teams are composed of passionate developers like you. They've learned the topic, mastered it, and now they teach other developers. I learned all my techniques and skills from the developers on the Kadeco teams and by learners like you. We learn, we practice, and we teach. We do so in a friendly, supportive manner. We aren't judges, we're coaches looking to take your skills to the next level. That's the ethos of Kadeco and what I do. So if you like this course and you are looking to explore a related field in technology, head over to Kadeco.com. It's the same teaching style, and who knows, in a couple of years, I'll be working with you on your own Unity course. Okay, open up your current project in progress. We'll get started by looping through some arrays. To get started, create a new script and call it loops. Select the text object and remove any previous scripts. Add the loop script to it. Now open the loop script in Visual Studio Code. Add the following.
Save, head back to Unity. Select the button game object. In the click event, add the text game object and select the show message method. Awesome, we're all set to get loopy. Return back to Visual Studio Code. First, we are going to add all the numbers between 1 and 10. In show message, add the following. Now for our loop, add the following. That's our first loop. We initialized our i variable to 0. Next, we set the condition. Simply translated when i is less than 10, then run the code. Finally, we increment the i variable. This loop will run 10 times from 0 to 9. It may feel a little weird to start from 0, but you'll get used to it over time. OK, now let's add the i variable to our answer for each loop iteration. And we'll print out the answer. Save and switch back to Unity. Run the game. Press the button and look at that. We have our answer. It's 45. And you can see this when we add 0 through 9. OK, what if we only want to add even numbers together? Return back to Visual Studio Code. Add the following. This will now add even numbers together. If the i variable has no remainder when divided by 2, then it is an even number. Save and switch back to Unity. Run the game. This time we get 20, and you can see it here when we add even numbers together. Awesome, we get our value. Now let's add just the odd numbers together. Switch back to Visual Studio Code. Update the for loop to the following. You've just been introduced to the continue keyword. Here the if statement checks for an even value. If the value is even, then the code flow reaches the continue keyword. This keyword tells the loop to skip to the next iteration. This means everything after the continue keyword is ignored for the current iteration of the loop. Save and switch back to Unity. Run the game. Press the button. We get the answer of 25. You can see it here. OK, let's play around with loops and arrays. Switch back to Visual Studio Code and add the following. Here we have an array of test scores. We want to find the average, but per our app logic, if we run into a negative number, we should stop the averaging operation. Add the following. This time we are testing against the length of an array. Now let's perform the average operation.
As you can see, working with loops and arrays work really well together. Here we check if the current number isn't negative 1. Then we add the numbers together. Now let's add an else. Whereas the continue keyword jumps to the next loop iteration, the break keyword immediately exits the current loop. Yes, you can put loops inside of loops. In our case, we just leave the loop and continue onward. Add the following. Save and switch back to Unity. Play the game. Press the button. And we get an error message, because we have a negative number in our test scores. Now switch back to Visual Studio Code and delete the negative one from the array. Return back to Unity. Press the button again. This time we get the average. So we just learned about the for loop. But there's another loop that's also interesting. It's called the for each loop. The for each loop is great when looping through arrays. Open Visual Studio Code. Comment out the previous code. Add the following. This is a new keyword for the loop. Then we add a pair of parentheses. Now we're going to loop through every item in the array, so we need to create a variable for that current item. Next, we add the in keyword and the array itself. With each loop iteration, the test score variable contains the current array element. You don't have to count the length or increment the counter. It's all done automatically. Now let's update the rest of the loop to use it. Save and switch back to Unity. Run the game. Press the button. We get the same result, this time using a for each loop. There are two other loops which are just slight variations. This is the while and do while loop. The while uses the keyword while with the loop condition being put in parentheses. Then we provide all our code in the braces. The while loop will run indefinitely until the expression resolves to true. It's up to you to break out of the loop. In cases where the developer wants the loop to run forever without a condition, you will see something like this. In this case, you must at some point break out of the loop, or it will loop until the end of time. That's the while loop. The other loop is the do while loop. It's almost the same thing as a while loop. You start with the keyword do, followed by your braces. Your code runs in the braces. After the closing brace, you put the condition for the loop. Like the while loop, it's up to you to either satisfy the condition or break out of the loop. The big difference between the while loop and the do while loop is that the do while loop will run at least once, where the while loop may not run at all. Honestly, I almost never use the do while loop, but it's there if you need that extra tool in your toolbox. Now for the demo, and that's where you come into play. Here comes your challenge. I want you to update the code to use the while loop and then the do while loop. This is going to be a bit challenging, but you have the skills at this point to work through the issue. Remember, you must create a counter variable and increment with each loop iteration. Give it a shot. And it's okay to make mistakes. That's the best way to learn.
Okay, let's go through this together. If you got stuck, no worries. You'll have a lifetime of game dev in front of you to work out the kinks. Let's first write this using a while statement. This looks exactly like a weird, unconventional for loop, but it works just the same. Save, switch back to Unity. Run the game, and it runs like before. Now for the do while loop. Switch back to Visual Studio Code. Add the following. And you can see the code looks pretty similar. Save. Return back to Unity. Run the game. Press the button, and we get the same result. To really highlight the difference between the while loop and the do while loop, let's update our counter. Return back to Visual Studio Code. Save the code. Switch to Unity. Run the game. You'll see with the do while, we get an error message because we are trying to access an element of the array that isn't there. Switch back to Visual Studio Code. Now change it to a while loop. Save, return to Unity. Press the button. This time we get our error message printed on the screen versus an error written to the console. It tested the condition first, then skipped over the loop. That way, we avoided getting an element that didn't exist from the array. You'll be using loops all the time in game dev, so definitely get comfortable with them. In the next episode, we're going to take a mid-course breather. We're going to review everything we covered so far and take a look at where we are going, and that's object-oriented programming. So, I'll see you then.